hey Charlie you guys this is the last episode on this series so I said I was gonna upload four and as you can see from the title of this video this is the fourth video this is episode four so yeah I came through hi guys welcome back to my channel now you guys this is the last episode on this series and yeah I am so glad that we have come to the end of this whole series but at the same time I am sad that I don't know if I'm going to keep uploading videos with intro so I'm just sad that the whole experiment is over but yeah I enjoyed myself I enjoyed every step every process in fact I just realized this whole process and experiment just made me realize that I actually like talking to the camera so let's see how it goes let's see if I'm going to start adding this to my videos but anyways let's go ahead and talk about what today's episode is all about so you guys um before we get into what the series is all about my name is vivian okeke i am a seamstress or a fashion designer anyone based in abuja and yeah abuja is in nigeria in case you don't know where that is located and now back to the series now series series is the series of outfit i made for myself for this past christmas celebration i said i was going to show you guys the process of how i achieve each and every one of them and yeah this video is based on that and this is the final video in case you've not seen episode one you've not seen episode two you've not seen episode three what are you waiting for just go click and watch on episode four we're going to be creating the dress like a cut out dress I don't even know what the name is but anyways this was actually a requested video and um, I, I just loved it so much maybe I got the message the DM on my Instagram I love the dress so much and I'm like hey Charlie I am going to make this on my own series so I decided to take the idea and then I started to add this on my series and of course I'm just still going to show you guys how I was able to create this so I have provided the measurements you'll be needing to create this and also the steps are going to be finger crossed they are going to be easy for you to understand so yeah don't get bored don't get discouraged if you're a beginner you can also make this dress so just stay tuned stay subscribed if you're not subscribed click on the subscribe button and please you guys this four episode of um videos or these four videos i just uploaded based on my series please help me engage help me go if you've not liked any of them just go back watch and like comment or even share please help me do that and also if you're new you know what to do i've said that before just go ahead and subscribe and without no further ado without no talking too much from vivian let's get into the video so guys first thing first um you should know that the dress we're about to create has a joining in the middle that's at the waist part so now i'm just going to create the top part first and then we can go ahead and make the pleated skirt part so the length of my top part is 18 inches that is what i'll be using but then along the line when i was joining i decided to join from 16 inches so I'll, I, I will be at the end of the video showing you guys the adjustments i did at last so i'm just going to go ahead and mark the length And I'm just going to go ahead and divide my shoulder measurements by two. And then I'll mark this down at the top part of the pattern. This is where the shoulder sits, the first thing on the top part of the pattern. And now from that point where I marked the shoulder measurements, I'll drop my shoulder by one inch. So I'm just making the slope. I'm dropping the shoulder by one inch to create the slope. And then I'll go ahead and connect the slope to the neckline. That's to the center front. Which is where the neckline will be sitting so i'm just going to indicate that this is where the neckline will be sitting for beginners don't get confused now i'll divide my round armhole by two and mark this down from the slope and once i'm done doing that i'll confirm if the measurement i have at the armhole point is the same measurement i have on my shoulder so my shoulder i marked 7.5 and now i just make sure that the armhole point too is 7.5 and as you can see i just adjust that so once i am done doing that i'll connect the armhole point to the slope like this with a straight line and i'll also rule an horizontal line here and you guys this is where the armhole curve will be sitting so i'm just going to go ahead and label this out so you know this is the shoulder 
So the next thing for us to do now is mark the boss points. I'm just going to go ahead and mark my boss points. And this is 10.5 inches from my shoulder. So just go ahead and take the measurement you're seeing on the screen and mark this down if you're a beginner. This is my boss point. So the next point for us to mark is the under boss point. So yeah, the dress we're about to make, um, let me not say anything, let's get to that point so you don't get confused. So I'm just going to go ahead and mark my under boss point and that is 13.5 inches. And you guys, the length is going to be acting as the waist. So now I'll go ahead and divide my round bust by 4 and then I'll mark this down on the bust line. And once I am done doing that, I'll connect this to the armhole point like this. I'll take it up like this. And then I'll move to the armhole. I'll find the middle point on my armhole. You guys, I marked 8 inches there. So the middle point is going to be 4. When you divide the 8 inches by 2 like this. As you can see, I got 4 inches, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark 4 inches. And from the 4 inches middle point, I'll go in by half an inch because I want to create my front armhole curve. So I'll connect the half inches I went in by to the armhole point and then to the slope. So this is me creating my front armhole curve. And you guys, I forgot to tell you that this pattern I am creating right now is, is going to be the same pattern I'll use for the back. And now to get my back armhole curve, I'm just going to connect the middle points to the armhole points like this. And the red marker is for our back armhole, while the blue marker is for the front armhole. So now let's go back to dividing our round measurements. I'll go back to my under bust and I'll divide my round under bust by 4. And um, I'm just going to mark this down. And once I'm done marking my round under bust divided by 4, I'll go ahead and connect this to the bust line like this. And then I'll move to my waist point, that's the length. I'll divide my round waist by 4. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark this down on the length. Remember the length is acting as the waistline too. And now I'm just going to go ahead and connect this to the under bust line. So now marking the neckline, the, um, the neck width I'll be using for my dress is 3.5 inches. So just go ahead and determine how wide you want your neck to be. And remember the neck width is for the front and the back. So yeah. So I'll go ahead and mark my neck depth for the back piece. Like I said, I'll be using the same pattern for the back. So I'll just mark down 1 inch and that is how low my back will be. I'll go ahead and connect this with the curve. I'm connecting the neck depth for the back to the neck width oh I, I said I was going to use red marker for the back anything you see red marker just know it's for the back and now the neck depth for my front is going to be 3.5 so that is how deep the front will be so go ahead and determine how deep you want your front neckline to be and mark this down and I also do the same thing I'll connect the depth of the front to the neck width like I said, the neck width is the same for the front and the back. And here you have it. So I'm just going to add one inch allowance to my pattern paper. So you can go ahead and add one inch or you can add more than one inch. It does up to you. But make sure you add enough allowance because we're going to be joining this to a lining. So yeah, once I'm done, I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my pattern. And I'll be cutting out the back armhole for now. Also cut out the back neckline for now when I'm cutting out the front I'll cut out the front neckline but first of all because I'll be cutting out my back piece first I'm just cutting out the back neckline so on my vlog I showed you guys the process and on the process I indicated that I'm just gonna go in from the waist part I'll be going in by 1.5 inch and then where you have the ammo sitting on the under bust part I'll go down by 1 inch so this is the waist, like I said, the length is the waist. So I'll place my tape from the underboss and I'll mark one inch down. So I'm just coming down by one inch from the underboss. And then on the waistline, that's the length, I'll be going in by 1.5 inch. If you want to understand what I did here, I did it on my blog. So I'm just going to mark that down. So I'm just going to use the blue marker so you guys don't get confused. 
now so i have these two points like this what i'll do is connect the underboss the new underboss line to the waistline like this so i'm going to use the dots method i'm just going to make dots and create the shape i want and this is how i connected here yeah? so once i am done and i am satisfied with this i'm just going to go ahead and connect with a curve ruler So I'm just going to show you guys 1.5 here on the waist. You go in and then you go down by one inch from the underboss line. So yeah, that's it. So I'll go ahead and connect with the curve ruler because I'm satisfied with how this looks. I'll just use my curve ruler to give it a curve. So now I am going to go ahead and cut out the part I don't need. And you guys, like I said, I'm going to be using this pattern for the front and the back. So when I'm cutting the back, I'm just going to fold in this part like this. And then for you guys not to get confused, just go ahead and rule the one inch to the center front. Just take the line to the center front, a straight line, rule a straight line. And just go ahead and fold from that line on down, from the line down to the waist, fold it in. So when I'm cutting out my back, this is what I'll be using. So I just fold in the part that makes this whole pattern the front and then this is how I'll be cutting my back. So now I have my um, fabric here and it is folded into two so always make sure you do this. Fold your fabric into two and because this is the back piece I'm just going to go ahead and mark 1.5 inch for the zip allowance. So I will advise you guys to, before you start cutting directly, unless you're a professional, you already know how to sew, I will advise you to watch this video first so you know what you're getting into and then you just, on, at the second time when you're watching, you have your fabric and your pattern everything ready to cut and sew. Now I have my zip allowance, I'm just going to place my pattern after the zip allowance and then i'll cut it out make sure you leave allowance on the base of your back piece because we're going to be hemming this in so apart from the allowance on the base of the back piece there's no other allowance i'll be leaving so you guys i'm just going to go ahead and adjust my zip line by marking one inch on the under bust and then i'll just connect that one inch to the shoulder like this and that is it so on the shoulder 1.5 inch sits there why on the bust and on the under bust one inch sits there for the zip so you guys this is my back piece so yeah here you have it this is the back piece so what i'll do is i'll go hem the base like i said that's why I said you should leave allowance at least half an inch or one inch allowance so you can hem. So I'm just going to go ahead and hem this a little bit like I'll be hemming it by quarter an inch. That's the base of the back piece. And then on the neckline, I'll be sewing a bias on the neckline. So if you don't know how to sew bias to um, fabrics or to your neckline, I have a video that can help you out. So this is my bias. I'm just going to sew this on the neckline. And that is that for the back piece. Now for the front piece, I have my fabric folded into two. And yeah, I have this lining also folded into two. So you guys, I'm cutting the main piece and the lining together. So I have them folded into two like this. And I'm just going to place them equally. So now before I cut out my front piece, I have to cut out the neckline. Remember, we didn't do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the armhole. For the front piece and i'll also be cutting out the neckline so if you're doing this method with me just make sure you do this make sure you cut out your front neckline and your front armhole before you place this to cut so this is the front pattern let's go ahead and cut this so i'm just going to place my pattern on the fabric and the lining i'll pin this down if you don't have pins use heavy objects on your pattern to hold down your pattern to your fabric
so this is the front piece i'm just going to take off the pattern so you can see this clearly so i have the front piece here and i also have the lining so this is the lining and now let's go ahead and make our pleated skirts so the width of the fabric i'm using for the pleated skirt should be your round waist plus five inches or depending on how well you want the back to drop so my round waist is 31 and how much i want it to drop is five inches so 31 plus five inches gives you 36 now i'm just going to go ahead and now multiply the 36 by three and then i got 108 inches so that is what i have here on my fabric and as you can see i had to join two fabrics together to get the 108 so you can go ahead and do that there's nothing wrong with you joining to get the amount of fabric you need so the length of my um pleated skirt is 18.5 inches but yeah i'm just going to, i'm still going to change this later like i adjusted the length later to what i wanted but for now i'm using 18.5 inches so at the base of the fabric for my pleated skirt i'm just going to go ahead and hem this by half an inch i'm just going to hem this by half an inch and once i am done doing that i'm going to determine how wide i want my pleats to be so go ahead and determine how wide you want it to be but i'll be using one inch as the width of my pleats but before then i'm just going to mark half inch here for joining so i'm just going to leave half inch allowance and then after the half inch allowance i'm going to go ahead and mark one inch as the width of my pleats so So I'll keep marking one inch consistently, one inch apart, one inch apart, and that is the width of my pleats. So I'm just going to keep marking it one inch, one inch, one inch apart. So go ahead and determine how you want your pleats to be, how wide you want it to be, and then, yeah, mark that particular number consistently on your fabric. And make sure the markings are visible because you're going to need them to pleat. So what I will do now is I'll pick one of the, the I'll pick the first uh, one inch and then I'm just going to place this on the third one inch. So I'll take the first and I'll count three and then I'll place it on the third. The same thing, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So one on three, I'm just going to pin this. So make sure you have your pin at hand, like see the way I just did it. So I just had to... um pin them on the fabric and tie the fabric around my wrists so i can have it close to me while i pleat so yeah and i also have my hot iron here so i can keep the splits in place so i'm just going to go ahead and pick the first one inch and place on the third so what you're doing is pick one place on the third one two three one two three so one on three one on three one on three that is the rhythm <laughs> that is how i was able to pleat my fabric so yeah i'm just going to still use my hot iron to keep the pleats in place and then i'll go again one two three i'll pick one and then place it on three one on three like that if you need to slow this down please do that if you need to pause please do that so you understand what i'm doing so before i continue i'm just going to confirm my 36 also i'll place this on the waistline to confirm the 36 I want on my fabric. So 36 is my new waistline. And now you can see I have SS. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the SS. Now it is time for me to cut out the lining and then what I did for the lining, the width of my lining is my round waist times 2 plus 8 inches allowance. So my round waist is 31 already you know and I'm just going to make sure I times that by 2 and that's 62 inches worth of fabric plus 8 inches allowance. And now all I have to do on the waistline of this fabric is just to gather the fabric. So what I'll do is just go ahead and gather and you guys on the base of my lining already I hem this in by half an inch and make sure that the lining you're cutting is shorter than your main piece 
so i already went ahead to fold this in that's hem this in by half an inch and then i sewed on it once i am done sewing the gather stitch on the top of the lining i'm just going to go ahead and gather this to the new round waist that's my new round waist that is 36 i'm just going to go ahead and gather the fabric to 36 inches And I'm just going to go ahead and confirm the 36 inches. And yeah, you guys, I got that. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold my main piece into two to get the middle point because I'm about to attach the top part to it. So I need the middle point. And then um, I'm just going to indicate the middle point with my chalk. And then on the top parts, I'm just still going to indicate the middle point. And yeah, because I have this ironed out, the middle point is already showing from the hash line. So I'm just going to place the top parts to the base parts, making sure the two middle points sit together. So make sure the two middle points sit together. Now, if you have to pin this first, go ahead and pin this first so you get it right. And then I'm just going to sew by half an inch on this also by half an inch and also repeat the same step on the gather fabric and the lining for the top indicate the middle point and then place the top parts on the middle point of the um, gather fabric middle point on middle point make sure you pin this down to get it right and then go so by half an inch and now as you can see this is how it looks and while I was doing that, I decided to close up the back of the pleated skirts. And also, the, I did the same thing on the gathers. I closed up the back of the gathers. That's the base, the skirt part. I don't know why I keep calling it the skirt part, but yeah, it's the skirt part. So I closed it off, and now I have to join the lining to the main piece. So I'll just go ahead and place the lining to the main piece. I will place this wrong side facing wrong side. So I'm just going to make sure that these two um, pieces sit together. Like the middle point on the lining and the middle point on the top part sit together. And then I'm just going to pin the sides. I'll pin the neckline because I'm going to sew on both the neckline and on the sides. I'm just going to sew even on the waistline. I'm going to sew on the waistline. So practically I'm sewing on all parts of this top part. I'm sewing on the waistline, on the sides and on the neckline. But I'll be leaving the armhole open because I'll still have to attach a sleeve to this. So, so also make sure you sew in the sides like this the opening we have on the top part make sure you sew this with the lining sew the neckline sew the shoulders if you want to but we still have to attach the um, back piece to this so yeah so once i am done doing that i'm just going to go ahead and flip this to the right side and you guys you're going to see how beautiful this thing looks like it is not yet done but yeah it was coming up so pretty that do you know while i was making this i was just so happy with the outcome i was so so happy and impressed with the outcome and now you guys this is what i have so to make sure the lining um sits in this dress like it doesn't pop out i'm just going to go ahead and top stitch on the waistline so I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch so I can keep the lining in and it doesn't pop out of the fabric of the main piece and now you guys after top stitching I have to join the back piece to this so here is my back piece I already did the bias on the neckline and then I hemmed the base of the back piece I said I was going to do that so I, yeah, I did that so I'm just going to go ahead and place my back piece on this right side facing right side. Never forget that. So I'm just going to place the right side facing right side. And I'll sew on the shoulders and I'll sew on the sides. So this is the second piece of the back piece. And voila, this is what I have. 
everything joined everything looking pretty and now what i have to do is attach my zip to this so we can move ahead to the last part of this video which is the sleeves so here is my zip i'll be using the black zip for this and i'm just going to go ahead and attach my zip. And now for us to create the sleeves, I'm just going to place my tape on the armhole and confirm the measurements I need. And once I have that sorted out, I'll go ahead and bring out the fabrics for the sleeves. And this is it, guys. So yeah, the dress I'm trying to recreate has a short sleeves and I like the sleeves like that. I'm just going to create the same short sleeves. The length of my sleeves here is 9.5 inches. 9.5 inches. And you guys, I folded this into two. So yeah, make sure it is folded into two. So what I'll do on the top of the sleeve fabric, I'm just going to mark in three inches like this. From the close edge, I'll be marking in three inches. And then I'll, from the open edge, I'll be marking down five inches. So this is like a short way I create sleeves. I have like a detailed way to make sleeves though but this is a shortcut i use when i'm trying to hurry up my sewing so i'll connect the three inches like this to the five inches so just see how i did it i'm just gonna go ahead and connect like this like a very lazy s and now i'm just gonna cut out the part i don't need on the sleeves so like I said, this is a short way I create sleeves, the shortest way, my shortcut to making sleeves. So before I go sew, I'm just going to go ahead and mark what I need for my armhole. I'm just going to mark that. That is 10 inches. And then I will divide my round, the point where the sleeves is going to stop. I'll divide the points, the round points by two. And then I'll mark this on the base of the sleeves. Round point is 13 inches divided by two gives you 6.5. So I'm just marking down 6.5 plus half inch sewing allowance. I'm going to go ahead and connect it like this to the 10 inches on the armhole and now I can cut this out and go sew. So I'm just going to sew by half an inch on this side because that's the allowance I left and on the base of those sleeves I'm just going to hem this in by half an inch. And make sure you do the same thing, you place the sleeve on the other fabric of the sleeves. So I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this, um, the first piece of the sleeves. I'll duplicate this on the other fabric. And here you have it, you guys. The sleeves is all hemmed. The base of the sleeve is hemmed. And now all we have to do is attach the sleeves to the dress. And you guys, this is all I have for you on this video. This is how I was able to create this beautiful and cute dress. And I hope this whole steps is able to help you create one for yourself please let me know in the comment section and you guys please don't be too quick to judge if you know there's any part that you don't understand very well you can pause and then just take your time and watch it to understand or you can ask me questions on the comment section these are the adjustments i did on the front piece the length i decided to use like i said was 16 inches at last and then the pleated skirt i reduced it to, to 16 inches and yeah that is how i was able to get the length of the dress and here you have it the final look hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for supporting me on the series i really appreciate you guys every one of you you guys are amazing so thank you so much for watching and engaging and you guys don't forget to like subscribe share and comment i love you so much once more i'll be seeing you on my next video bye